Hi, this is Scott Hanselman, and I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about some of the new features in Visual Studio 2012. In this video, ASP.NET MVC 4. This is part of the overall ASP.NET ecosystem. ASP.NET MVC is our model view controller pattern. By default, you get a number of cool features with MVC. Let's switch over to Visual Studio, and I'll show you a few. I'll say new project. There's a completely empty ASP.NET MVC 4 project a basic one with just the scaffolding to get you started, an intranet application, an intranet application that uses Windows authentication, and a mobile application that uses jQuery mobile to jumpstart your mobile development, and then ASP.NET Web API that I'll cover in another video is also included in ASP.NET MVC 4. Take a look at the intranet application and run it by default. All of these templates are HTML5 by default now, and notice that they include responsive design, so this default template resizes and changes for small devices. So you get a little bit of mobile support there as well. Let's go and create a small model. Add class. We'll make a uh, person. Here's a person. And we'll say that a person has an ID and they have a first name, and they have a last name, and they have a birthday. So I haven't described the database here. I'm going to be using uh, Entity Framework code first. So I'm describing a database, but I'm starting with code first. Now I'm going to right click and say Add Controller. We're going to add an MVC controller, and I'll call it a Person Controller. We have a number of templates to choose from. I can scaffold out lots of different things. In this case, we're going to scaffold out person, make a new data context called the person context, and we're going to use the Razor View Engine for our view. So I'll hit Add, and this is going to start scaffolding out that. Watch the right side of the screen. So we just got a person controller with a person data context, Details, Create, Read, Update, Delete for Person. We got a Person Database Context for the Entity Framework that will by default use uh, Local DB, but could be use SQL Azure or anything else. We've also got a Person Views, Create, Delete. Let's run that and see what we got in just a few seconds. Type in Person. The scaffolding created an index page. Where I can go and say create. I can edit, delete, view details. It took very little time to get a nice little simple site going. Automatically created a database for me. I'll look in the server explorer and you can see there's people, the data types were taken care of. We can also make a quick change. Let's say we want to make sure first name and last name are required rather than optional. We'll come down into the console here and enable migrations. We're going to enable database migrations for our MVC application. All right, and this is going to allow me to make a change to person and change the database. So I want to change first name to required, last name to required, and I'll also make a, uh, min a maximum length. Let's just be silly and say that last names can only be 10 long. I've made that change here in my model. Let's go and add a migration, added required. Here we see first name and last name are no longer nullable and last name has a maximum length of 10. Now we'll go and update the database. Applying those migrations. Those migrations are located here in the migrations folder. I'll run the application. Go to person. And when I make a new person, First name, last name required. 
Let's make a person with a super long last, see? Just as I'm typing super long last name, it says the field must be a string with a maximum length of 10. So we've got the information about our model stored on the model in one place, and it's propagating its way through the database, through the JavaScript that handles the unobtrusive validation. I was able to keep the application dry. Don't repeat yourself. Another nice feature of ASP.NET MVC 4 is mobile support. We've added mobile support. Here's an application. This is the desktop version of the application. I'll go and add a mobile layout. I'm going to take my layout file and say mobile right here. And then on the main desktop page, I'm going to add what's called a view switcher. And a view switcher can ask questions like, is this a mobile browser? And if it is, show a link that says switch to mobile or switch to desktop. In this case, it's only going to show up on mobile devices. I'm going to comment that out so my desktop people can insist on the mobile version of the site. Here it says displaying desktop view. I'll click on mobile. Now I've got a mobile version of my page. This is using the jQuery mobile libraries. This information here is the same though. We're changing the layout, but the middle part is the same. Let's add uh, a separate page for that. Notice that just by naming it dot mobile, the URL stays the same, but the page that's rendered is different. Here's our mobile page, hit F5. Now we've got a nice mobile menu. This is appropriate for desktop browsers. And here's a more appropriate view for a mobile browser. This is made possible by the mobile support in ASP.NET MVC. I can have not just .mobile with these display modes, but also things like iPhone specific or Windows phone specific. Different views can have different layouts, all maintaining the same URL structure. Mobile support is built into ASP.NET MVC as well. That's just a few of the features that are new in ASP.NET MVC 4. I hope you continue to explore this video series and check out some of the other new features in Visual Studio 2012 and ASP.NET 4.5.